Hello and welcome to Business Arena live from Warsaw on TVP World. I'm your host, Marie Cato. Let's go to the latest business stories of the day. The Polish government has proposed an amendment that would reduce the minimum distance at which wind turbines can be built from homes. If passed, the law could lead to a fourfold production increase by the end of the next decade. 200 metres may not seem a lot, but for the development of onshore wind farms, it's a crucial difference. Having 500 metres instead of 700 metres is going to be a game changer uh, for the wind industry. And this is something that um, not only the wind industry, but also uh, in general, uh, the Polish economy needs. According to the draft bill published by the Polish Ministry of Climate and Environment, this change increases the potential area for wind energy development by 44%, with a significant boost to energy generation output expected. Poland's onshore wind farms currently have a capacity of 9.5 gigawatts. The new bill is expected to double this number by the end of the decade, and then again by 2040. The updated legislation will also accelerate the permit approval process by one-third, reducing the timeline to around four years. However, while this major barrier for industry development has now been addressed, Tobias Adamczewski stressed that other issues still remain. The onshore wind will need uh, capacity uh, in order to connect to the grid. Um, and uh, the grid development is going to be one of the major issues in the upcoming years, not only for wind, but also for photovoltaics. Total investment by all companies, including the private sector in grid modernization, is projected to reach around 32 billion euros in the coming years. Without it, fully capitalizing on renewable energy production will not be possible. European ministers of industry gathered in Brussels on Thursday to discuss key aspects of the Draghi report, which has sparked conflicting opinions on innovation and regulatory reforms. Our correspondent Sasha Farbach has this report. For the first time, former ECB President Mario Draghi's report will be scrutinized by those whose opinion matters, Europe's ministers of industry. At its core, Draghi calls for a significant boost to the EU's competitiveness in a challenging global landscape, emphasizing the need for member states to collaborate on innovation, digital transformation and regulatory reform. Now, Speaking to ministers, as they arrived, the opinions on the report were divided, and many ministers hoped a dialogue would result in productive outcomes today. But no breakthroughs are expected when we talk to them in the morning. Now, Draghi's report highlights Europe's strengths in technology and sustainability, but also warns that rivals like China are closing in. So, what's the best medicine? Draghi advocates for substantial investment in R&D and a streamlined regulatory framework, all to the tune of around 800 billion euros annually. However, differing national priorities pose challenges, particularly around financing, with cautious nations like Finland already expressing reluctance to take on more debt. The budget must remain reasonable and we do not support any instruments funded by debts uh, in European Union's budget. The RRF recovery and resilience facil facility was uh, an exceptional and single uh, instrument and such arrangements should not be taken into uh, to the financing of European, uh, European uh, budget in the future. This meeting presents a vital opportunity for European ministers to discuss how Draghi's report could serve as a roadmap for enhancing Europe's competitiveness. However, the challenge lies in finding fair ways to invest in critical areas like innovation, especially as some governments have already expressed reluctance to commit funding. Now, speaking to a Dutch MEP recently, if there are targeted plans for innovation, then that may sway frugal capitals. So, can Europe unite to implement these essential reforms? or will Draghi's warning of a slow decline become a reality? A notable concern today is the absence of any commissioner at the meeting on Thursday. Does this reflect the commission's priorities or suggest deeper difficulties that may lie ahead? Sasha Farbach reporting for TVP World in Brussels. As central banks across the world are slashing interest rates to prop up economies, Poland is taking a different approach. Discussions about possible rate cuts aren't expected until the first quarter of 2025. Just this week, the Czechs did it, and so did Hungary. 
This came on the heels of interest rate cuts by the ECB and the Fed. However, Poland's Monetary Policy Council is reluctant to make a similar move until 2025. The economists say they have their reasons. I would like to uh, highlight the fact that although an um, increasing number of central banks uh, indeed has started uh, interest rate cuts, um, the context of those cuts is uh, quite differentiated between uh, particular countries. In my opinion, uh, we shall not expect cuts before 2026. The Council maintains that rate cuts will only be considered if there is definitive evidence of a sustained decline in inflation. Current forecasts indicate that inflation could peak at around 6% in March or April of next year. The initial cut, likely a modest 25 basis points, may occur in the second quarter of 2025, with a cumulative reduction of 100 basis points anticipated by the end of the year. However, the question remains, is this the right decision? The situation is always complex, and it's rarely possible to label anything as purely good or bad. However, I do believe that interest rate cuts are on the horizon for Poland. The economic conditions and forecasts are looking favorable, and inflation continues to follow a general downward trend. Another issue is how this will influence the Polish currency, which has been gaining in strength for some time. We in the Bank PKO, uh, we believe that um, the exchange rate of Polish zloty shall be quite flat, uh, and this is due to the fact that this... Um, Appreciating uh, that uh, this uh, pressure towards appreciation of zloty uh, will be somehow discounted by um, this uh, risk aversion and, well, geopolitical risks. And the situation is always subject to change, particularly when considering future economic trends. And today we want to look at what the region's national bank's interest rate cuts mean for the Central and Eastern European region. Does this now mean more pressure on Poland or is the national bank going to stick to its guns? Where is Poland's economy heading? Stay with us for the bottom line. Despite many challenges, OECD estimates show that the global economy remains resilient and inflation is gradually declining. The organization expects global GDP to grow by 3.2% in both 2024 and 2025, with a one percentage point improvement for 2024 compared to earlier OECD forecasts. These are the new forecasts that we have for, for the OECD remains economy. cautiously optimistic that when that it comes a, to the global economy. According to the recent report, real GDP growth in G20 countries such as the US, Brazil, India and Indonesia has been robust, even though Germany has struggled and Argentina has seen a decline. Recent indicators show sustained momentum, especially in the services sector. Real wage growth is boosting household incomes and spending, though purchasing power has yet to fully recover to pre-pandemic levels. Inflationary pressures persist, particularly in services, but are expected to decrease by at least one percentage point in many countries. Most OECD countries are expected to bring inflation back to target by the end of 2025. Similar is the case in non-OECD affiliated nations, where the trend is also expected to be maintained. Persistent geopolitical tensions, financial market disruptions and labor market challenges pose risks, but falling oil prices and rising real incomes could strengthen consumer confidence and spending. And that's all for our latest business news updates. For more of the latest business stories, check out tvpworld.com.